All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Score. As you can see by the title, I'm coming with my very realistic. This is not necessarily what I would want to happen. This is what I feel like will happen. So this is a full-blown realistic prediction. The final 53-man roster breakdown with the depth chart included and practice squad on top of that. And there's going to be a lot of surprise cuts. I'm warning you now. They officially cut the roster down to 53 and come out with the official 53-man roster as of Tuesday by 4 p.m. That's the deadline, so be on the lookout for that. Of course, that's a later problem, though. And before we dive into that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, of course, I'm going to explain every pick, why some guys made the team, why some guys didn't, and explain what some of their alternative roles may be, especially like the guys who are doubling up as a positional player and a special teams player. And of course, man, check out the rest of the channel, man. All of my videos are organized in playlists. I even have a comedy playlist for all of my funny videos and since we're no longer getting any consistent information out of training camp they're keeping everything secretive game planning for the chargers from now on that's going to give me plenty of time to get all kinds of videos done especially these rookies film sessions so be on the lookout for that for these next couple of weeks leading up to this chargers game and without further ado let's get it Starting with the offense, 26 total players. I have three quarterbacks. Ryan Fitzpatrick is your clear-cut starter. Taylor Heineke is your clear-cut backup. And you never know, Kyle Allen may not be active on game days, we'll see, but I definitely think he's the third quarterback. Me personally, I prefer to go with the experiment and a Steven Montez, even though Kyle Allen is technically better today, he has a better grasp of the offense. What I saw from Steven Montez in that preseason game against the Patriots showed a lot of potential, and I just prefer to have some guy with a high ceiling, low floor, rather than a Kyle Allen that's a very low ceiling, but a relatively high floor. But that, I mean, that floor is not something I want to throw out there on Sundays ever anyway. I feel like once we throw Kyle Allen out there, we're not very likely to win the game anyway, so I prefer to keep a Steven Montez who may surprise us. But this is my realistic prediction, so these are the three quarterbacks we'll be keeping more than likely. Then running backs, I'm keeping four. I'm going to keep four running backs. I think Jared Patterson pushed for a roster spot. He may even be above Peyton Barber on the depth chart, but Peyton Barber is loved by this franchise. I mean, Ron Rivera, Scott Turner speak about him all of the time. So I think they just end up keeping both. And Jared Patterson will be one of our kick returners. And so, of course, you have Antonio Gibson as our lead back. But I don't think he's going to be like a Derrick Henry, Christian McCaffrey type of usage rate or like Ezekiel Elliott in his prime for the Cowboys. And that's a prime example of why we don't want to do that. You see how beat up and how many miles Ezekiel Elliott has on him. We're not going to make that same mistake with Antonio Gibson. So Antonio Gibson is going to play like Christian McCaffrey, but just nowhere near that usage rate. I think he would get somewhere between... 15 to 20 carries a game, maybe like three to five targets a game, but then you'll have Jared Patterson to come in the game every so often, take the load off of Antonio Gibson. Of course, J.D. McKissick is going to be out there running routes, juking linebackers out of their socks, being that elite third down back. And then Peyton Barber is your short yardage guy. Fourth and one, third and one, goal line. Peyton Barber can be a guy even though I mean I feel like Jared Patterson and Antonio Gibson can do it as well but I guess if you just know you're about to just give a running back some punishment you let Peyton Barber take that punishment so you can keep Antonio Gibson healthy long term then your receivers I'm keeping seven I gotta keep seven I was thinking six at first but then who's going to be our punt returner? And that's where DeAndre Carter comes in. DeAndre Carter is a very dependable punt returner with some explosion potential as well. I like Jared Patterson on kickoffs. I love him for punts as well. I'm just not sure if the organization does yet. He hasn't gone out there to consistently put together some tape to show that he can be a consistent dependable punt returner for us but what we saw in that preseason game against the Bengals I would love for him to eventually take over that starting punt returner and kick returner role and I think he will be one of the two kick returners back there day one hopefully he will who knows but then of course you have Terry McLaurin Curtis Samuel Deami Brown as your three absolute locks you have Adam Humphreys 
who's like a tier below them is a lock. Cam Sims, the tier below that is a lock. And then you have Antonio Gandy Golden making it because of his size and also him finally showing something in that Bengals game. Without that Bengals game, I'm not entirely too sure if Antonio Gandy Golden makes his team, but I, he definitely showed enough in that game to where like, this is why we spent a fourth round pick on this guy. You just can't teach his size. You can't teach his length. And it's really hard to teach hands like his as well. And the fact that we saw improvement, literally the same exact fade route to the same side of the end zone from the Patriots game that he didn't completed to where he did complete it against the Bengals that has to have the coaching staff excited and they said they really liked them so they spoke highly of them so I definitely see him making a team I think DeAndre Carter is the seventh receiver and again I think he makes a team because of punt returning then tight ends of course you have Logan Thomas John Bates that's your top two easily and I think Samus Reyes makes it as your third tight end They've already talked about him several times being literally the team's most physical blocker. And that's not even just out of the tight ends, the entire team, including the offensive line. So at the very least, day one, he's a really good, dependable blocker. Right now, the right side of our offensive line is moving people. Chase Roulier, Brandon Sheriff, and Samuel Cosme. If we ever need to get one yard, run it to their side because they're going to move people. And I feel like if you need it to, throw Sam Reyes out there as well. Because as of right now, he may be literally, even with the lack of technique probably our best blocking tight end on our entire roster he'll get the receiving game stuff down route running getting his head turned around and catching passes as soon as it touches hands rather than bobbling it and then catching it later I think he'll get all of that through experience and over time but months ago I did not think I'd be saying Samus Reyes is probably our best blocking tight end and I think right there that's enough for him to be the third tight end Ricky Seals Jones just as a foreshadow is definitely on the practice squad because they think very highly of Ricky Seals Jones as well to be able to have four running backs seven receivers and how many DBs they're gonna keep I think you go with three tight ends Ricky Seals Jones you're not too worried about him getting picked up off the practice squad like a Samus Reyes you put Samus Reyes on the practice squad this team's fighting to get him you know he's not going to survive supposedly you can protect four every week but i'm not exactly sure how those rules work i still wouldn't want to risk it whereas ricky seals jones he was a late free agency signing anyway like going into off-season practices like nobody people didn't want him anyway i believe he made it all the way through march and summer april before we picked him up so i'm not worried about him going to the practice squad and getting scooped up by another team and even if he does i mean it would suck but it's not a huge loss sam is Reyes is by far the more special talent i mean he literally has the potential to be the best tight end on this roster even better than logan thomas if we're just talking about ceiling potential pure athleticism remember his ras score which has this super complicated algorithm that takes into account like your 40 time your three cone how much you bench your height your weight all of that type of stuff anything that's physical and to deal with athleticism sam is is graded the highest out of any tight end in nfl history and there's no way you just let that go especially with a pete hayner who's already shown that he can get greatness out of logan thomas john Bates is already making progress and sam is ray is already making huge progress he went from never playing football in his life i mean we as fans have still played more football time wise than Samus Reyes even has. I mean, literally just months ago, he didn't even know what a 3-4 defense was. He didn't know what an audible was. All of this stuff that we think is common knowledge for somebody that literally has no experience with football in their life. He just caught a crash course of all of it. And the fact that he is where he's at already, I think shows that he has the potential to be a great tight end because for him to get as far as he has in just these couple of months we've had him if you just project that over the course of some years I think he will eventually reach that pro bowl all pro level potential that he has I do honestly and then interior offensive lineman I'm keeping five you have Brandon Sheriff and Chase Rulia of course I think Eric Flowers looks poised to start over Wes Schweitzer but like I've been saying for the past year Wes Schweitzer as a backup guard is a great thing to have I mean I think he's better than starting guards on other teams so to have him as a backup is crazy you don't exactly expect Brandon Sheriff to play 16 games and so to have a guy like Wes Schweitzer makes me be able to breathe way easier and then Tyler Larson is your backup center also first of all because he can play guard as well but Keith Ishmael can also play a little bit of guard but Tyler Larson is just a better player right now and then offensive tackles I'm keeping four you have Charles Leno as your starting left tackle Samuel Cosme as your starting right Cornelius Lucas as your backup swing tackle and then you have Sadiq Charles that can play interior offensive line 
and tackle. So we're super solid on depth. And that's why with all of this positional flex, with guys being able to play either both guard spots, center and guard, both tackle spots, and then even a Sadiq Charles that can literally play everywhere but center, that allows you to only have to keep nine offensive linemen. Because some of these players literally count as two or three guys within themselves. Then defense, we have 24 total players. Interior defensive line, of course, Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, Matt Ioannidis, and then Tim Settle is your backup. And then I think James Smith Williams definitely slides in, first of all, because of his positional flex. Again, this team is super versatile. They've been preaching speed, athleticism, and positional flex, and they definitely went out there and got it because James Smith Williams can play both interior defensive line and edge rusher. Then edge, of course, Chase Young and Montez Sweat. But then you have both of our late round picks in this past draft, William Bradley King and Shaka Tony already making strides of progress they're definitely further ahead in their development than i thought they would be they're still not ready to start type of progress yet but they're definitely further ahead in their development than i expected months ago for them to be at this point august 27th so i like them as backups a lot and plus rama bear has already said that a guy that they just drafted is more likely to make the team than the guys from two years ago or before that they want to give guys at least a year to show what they can do for the most part then linebackers i have Cole Holcomb is just starting Sam. John Bostic is just starting Mike until Jamin Davis is ready to take that over. Made a lot of progress. Made some huge strides going from the Patriots game to the Bengals. But I still don't think he's ready to start at Mike linebacker. But of course, Jamin Davis will start at Will until he's ready to take John Bostic's role over. And I think Khalid Hudson has looked pretty good at linebacker, but there's just no spot for him. Cole Holcomb is your Sam. And until Jamin Davis is ready to take over Mike and move John Bostic to the bench, Khalid Hudson will never be able to start. So we're waiting for Jamin Davis to start at Mike so Khalid Hudson can start at will. And then David Mayo, of course, is your backup linebacker. Very proven run stopper. Pro Football Focus literally graded him one of the best run-stopping linebackers in the entire NFL last year. And he's a strong special teams contributor, so I definitely see him making this team. Because Cole Holcomb, Jamin Davis, Khalid Hudson, all of these guys, especially with Cole Holcomb getting better in coverage lately, these guys are all more coverage guys. So if you need somebody on third and one and goal line to come in and you know for a fact he can stop a run play and plug the exact hole you want him to plug and block shed and all of that and to basically just be a battering ram, David Mayo's your guy. Then cornerbacks, I have William Jackson, Benjamin St. Juice and Kendall Fuller as your outsides, along with Tory McTire. And then, of course, Kendall Fuller and Jimmy Moreland as your slots. Kendall Fuller is kind of both. I hope Benjamin St. Juice is ready to take over as your starting outside corner sooner rather than later. In practices, he's been getting most of the reps at outside corner, even more than Kendall Fuller has. Kendall Fuller has been primarily in the slot when they run with the ones in practices, especially the past couple of weeks. But who knows? Maybe they're just trying that out. But when we go against the Chargers, it'll be Kendall Fuller starting at outside. Either way, though, I think Benjamin St. Juice is going to play a lot even if he doesn't start snap one game one i think he's going to play a lot even against the Chargers very early on but these are your five corners right here a lot of versatility again kendall fuller slot outside benjamin st juice could technically play a little slot if you want him to too but he's just been so great at outside i'd want him to just stay there and then jimmy moreland plays slot but he also has been getting some run at free safety a little bit in the preseason which is really interesting then your safeties cameron curl he is the embodiment of versatility and positional flex. He can literally play everywhere. You pretty much can play him anywhere, maybe except for outside corner. That's not like his ideal situation. And free safety is probably his second least ideal situation. But literally everywhere else on the back end, you can play him slot corner, strong safety, off of the edge like Jack Del Rio said a couple of days ago. Cover three, cover two, cover four, whatever. Cameron Curl can handle all of that. He can cover running backs, slot receivers, tight ends, whatever you need. Then you have Landon Collins as I guess you're starting strong safety. He's finally starting to show glimpses of his all pro giant self for the first time since we've signed him. So I'm excited about him and what he's going to do for this team, especially with this dominant team that's around him. Playing behind the defensive line that these guys are playing behind is going to just make them better. Like if they're 81 overalls, they're going to play like 86 overalls. If they're 86 overalls, they're going to play like 91 overalls. That's how much this defensive line helps these guys. With how much consistent pressure they're going to get, these guys aren't even going to have to do as much as they would with their previous teams. Landon Collins with the Giants, Bobby McCain with the Dolphins. And speaking of Bobby McCain, he is your best free safety right now. Not exactly sure how much he's going to actually play. 
because I think they want to have Cameron Curl and Landon Collins out there as much as possible just because of how talented they both are. But whenever we need a free safety, if we ever plan on running any type of cover one single high free safety, that Bobby McCain is literally your guy. The Jeremy Reeves, your backup free safety developmental guy, came in towards the end of last year and looked really good. Pro football focus loved him. They felt like he was one of the best safeties for like a four or five game span that we've had in years. And then Derek Forrest, again, Ron Rivera likes to give guys at least a year Plus, he's just a freak athlete. He's a developmental project that may pay dividends later on. He could be exactly what we hope DeShazer Everett would ever be at some point. A guy that can play strong, free safety, whatever you need. And he's poised to be a strong special teams contributor as well on special teams coverage. And then your three specialists, of course, you have Tressway, Dustin Hopkins, and Cameron Cheeseman. Cameron Cheeseman is your long snapper. Dustin Hopkins is your kicker. Tressway as your all-pro best punter in the league. Mr. Flip Field position right there, man. And then for the practice squad, I have quarterback Steven Montez, of course, running back Jonathan Williams, tight ends Ricky Seals Jones and Caleb Wilson. Again, if that protecting four practice squad players is a real thing, I think Ricky Seals Jones would be one of those protected players. Speaking of protected players, I think wide receiver Dax Milne would be another one. Isaiah Wright is also a pretty strong candidate to be protected as well. But I think if they're just going to spend one on receiver, I think it would go to Dax Milne because Rivera has already said that they see Dax Milne as our future slot. He's also a dependable returner as well. But I think DeAndre Carter is definitely ahead of him in the return game enough to where DeAndre Carter is the seventh receiver. Dax Milne is a protected player on the practice squad. Then offensive line wise, you have Keith Ishmael, David Sharp. I think they protect David Sharp sharp not gonna lie just because he's a relatively decent backup tackle i guess i don't like him that much but i mean the way that they brought him in and let him start at some point last year shows how highly they think of him and i think west martin he still has potential he's been awful but he has potential and i see him as a practice squad guy definitely not protected though then defensive line i think david bada casey two hill and daniel wise all of them have looked really good this offseason training camp preseason all of that making play after play after play so all of their stocks have risen and i'm pretty sure if we don't protect those guys at least one or two of them are going to get scooped up by another team i think devaro lawrence will also get scooped up by another team i don't even have them making the practice squad and then linebacker jared norris i see him making this practice squad definitely because of his strong special teams ability as well and then defensive backs wise, you have Troy Apke, who I think they're going to protect because of his special teams ability as well. And then, of course, he also is just a way better corner than safety. I'm not saying much because he was literally one of the worst safeties of all time when he played safety. But he's actually a pretty decent corner. I see them protecting him. Daryl Roberts, if he doesn't get scooped up by another team. And DeShazer Everett, if he doesn't get scooped up by another team, also making the practice squad. Those are my 16 practice squad players. Those are 69 players. 53 making the official roster. 16 the practice squad. And I also gave you my four protected players. Ricky Seals-Jones, Dax Milne, David Sharp, and Troy Apke. Again, this is my prediction. This is not exactly what I would want to happen. This is more so just based off of reports with Rivera, Jack the real scott turner and all of those guys have been saying in press conferences and interviews just little clues here and there who's been looking the best in preseason and training camp all of that type of stuff so again just to reiterate this is not what i want to happen this is my realistic prediction of what i think will happen can't wait to see how right or wrong i am by tuesday i'm excited i'm hoping i at least get 48 of them right for the 53 man roster and then the practice squad i mean that's a toss-up i tried there if i get at least six of those right i'm happy but yeah man please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video do you agree or disagree with a lot of my picks please give me your 53 man roster breakdown as well and also if you feel like it if you're up for the test also go out there and put your name on the 16 practice squad players that they may keep as well i tried it i think y'all should too go ahead and put your name on the line like i did and then also of course man please like this video if you liked it if you learned anything of course Big shouts out to all of my supporters. Shouts out to everybody that donates to the channel. A special shouts out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors, whose name you see scrolling on the screen right now. Again, y'all memberships will be super worth it. I'm coming out with a room reveal and then a separate video that's exclusive to channel members as well, along with the room reveal, will be me showing y'all all of my old burgundy and gold gear, all of the red skin stuff that I have. I mean, I have controllers. We have so many things. So that's going to be a separate video in itself. So there's going to be a room reveal. I may also just 
just go outside and show y'all my plants and stuff like my backyard since i talk about it so much i figured like just the whole behind the scenes my setup all of the screens that i'm using all that type of stuff that's one video and then all of my old gear from before we became the washington football team that's another video and then of course y'all get the exclusive way longer versions of film sessions when i do them specifically for the rookies for these next couple of weeks led, leading up to the regular season and then y'all know me man anytime somebody has a great breakout game i'm gonna do film sessions on them as well that includes chase young ryan fitzpatrick terry mcclellan all of these guys cameron curl just to name a few guys that i already did film sessions on last year during the regular season so again channel members y'all memberships will be worth it y'all are going to get so much exclusive content leading up to this regular season and throughout the regular season and again i'm gonna keep speaking it into existence the postseason as well so make sure y'all stay tuned man catch y'all later i'm out